19th place Queen's Park Rangers host 10th place Preston North End on Saturday evening and with the R's hanging just three points above the relegation zone with three matches to go, this really is do or die. Should QPR win this weekend and both Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday lose, QPR could feel much more confident about their safety because the Terriers and the Owls would both need back-to-back -back wins out of their last two games with a miraculous amount of goals scored to catch Rangers on goal difference. But if QPR lose and Huddersfield and Sheffield Wednesday both win this weekend, then it could be only goal difference keeping QPR out of the bottom three. The margins could hardly be any tighter, so let's take a look at our opposition for this weekend, and don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoy the video. After a 12th place finish last year, Preston started this season with a bang, topping the table with six wins from seven and going eight unbeaten. But unfortunately for Preston fans, it wasn't to last, and inconsistency would soon set in. They would go winless in their next seven championship matches. In fact, between the 30th of September and the 27th of January, they won just five of their 20 league fixtures, losing 12 and drawing three, and sinking from the playoff places to mid-table as a result. Strangely though, that strong start to the season has done a real job in shielding them from the type of harm you would expect a near half season run of poor form to do to a side. Not only because the 20 points they amassed in that unbeaten run of form at the start of the season is just one point more than their 19 point gap to the bottom three, but also because once they got their act together at the start of 2024, those points even kept them in with an outsider's chance of the playoffs at the business end of the season. Until back-to-back -back losses against Norwich and Southampton in the past two, that is. Since the 27th of January, they've won seven and drawn four of their past 15 championship fixtures, a run of form that kept them on the fringes of the hunting pack gunning for a playoff place. But Tuesday night's 3-0 loss to Southampton has more or less put an end to that wild dream. They would need to win their final three games and hope the four teams above them totally tank it to be in with a chance of a playoff spot. Now when you look at the stats, it does become more obvious why they evened out to the mid-table over the course of the season and why they didn't just have that extra mile in them to get into the playoffs. Because they're pretty much mid-table for all significant metrics. They're 13th for goals scored with 56, 11th for goals conceded with 57, and even top scorer Will Keane finds himself joint 9th with six other players in the league with 13 goals scored. Despite not bringing in any players in the January transfer window though, they are a much improved side in 2024. They're averaging more goals per game than the first half of the season, and they're conceding almost half the amount of goals. And as well as their improved form, there are a few other things for QPR to be worried about. Like the fact that Preston's away form has been so key to their turnaround in 2024. They've lost just two of their past seven away trips, winning three and drawing two. Or the fact that 40 of Preston's 63 points this season have come from teams 12th placed and below. Although it's worth noting they've only done the double over two of those sides this season, and QPR did manage to prize away a second consecutive away win from them back in December. Then there's also the danger that now that Preston's playoff dreams are pretty much over, we don't know which version of them is going to turn up on Saturday. Will they be on the beach after that thrashing from Southampton, much like we saw from Rangers against Sheffield Wednesday just two weeks ago, or will they be playing out of their skins in the hope that the teams above them stack it in their final three? Arguably though, the biggest thing for Rangers to be worrying about in this fixture is themselves. Rangers have taken just one point from the past available nine, they've scored just one goal in the process, and our gap to safety is now just three points. And when you take a step back and look at our recent form, things do look a bit worse. We've now only won two of our past eight, scoring just six goals in the process, and not a single attacking player has scored in that run. The maddest thing is if we turn any of those draws against Argyle, Sunderland, or West Brom into wins, we would pretty much be safe. And that's why there's no two ways about it. This is a season-defining match, and we know that kind of pressure doesn't produce good QPR displays. I said it in my whole City post-match reaction, I think we're getting to a point now where our safety is going to be determined by what the teams do around us rather than what we produce ourselves. My only hope is that the team have had a full week's rest and that Marty has had a week to conjure up a new plan for these final three matches because these last three performances haven't been up to scratch and at the bare minimum we need to make ourselves hard to beat. All we can do as fans is get behind the team on Saturday and hope they produce another Jimmy Dunn type miracle. That and get down the pub as early as possible ahead of the late kickoff to numb the pain. 
If I'm being really, really honest, I personally don't think we're going to see too much of a change on the pitch from what we've seen in the last few. So I'm going to go for 1-0 Preston and hope that my reverse psychology works. Thank you very much for watching. As usual, do pop your own predictions and thoughts in the comments below. And if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed this preview, don't forget to hit like and subscribe as well. It really helps me out. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video for my Preston post-match reaction. Come on, you us.